our uh, next item for tonight is going to be show and tell. Uh, so we can start in house if anyone wants to be the first to present. This is a piece of Norfolk Island pine. I picked it up in Florida last winter and it was freshly cut, right? right yeah. Just a couple of weeks old, it was still green. But by leaving it set, it was a block maybe 10 by 10 by 14 inches. And leaving it set in the dirt, since I just turned this a couple of weeks ago, it turned nice and spotty. And th this is a pot, this is a branches that were coming out of the tree. So I like to turn that kind of, it's nice wood to turn. And I put about five or six coats of lacquer on. Do you have a purpose for that? I mean, is there something you would no. put in that? It's just a box, it's a vase or a box. You didn't make it purpose built for something I like did not. cookies, jelly beans, cookies. <laughs> yeah. Managed cannabis. the Island pine primarily, like six branches in a circle. Yeah, pieces you're not before. If if yeah, if you if you want to pick the pieces out, my a friend of mine at Wood Turner down in Sarasota, Florida, is really good at this picking out wood. And these these branches, some of the branches, when you look at them, when you, would would be turning down, or when you have the log, you want to you want the log with the branches going up in the natural way. And that's what this one is. And to find that every knot has a pit in the center. And if, if that pit was up in here, so the branch is going up. And that's what you want to That's what you want to see. Barry's going to zoom that camera in on a little bit. There's little toggles on top there, Barry. Yeah, that's it. That's good. The knot down here is probably as easy as you can see, but there's a pit right on top here. And that's what you want to look for when you pick the, pick the wood out. Because you know you you want to not to go in a natural way, like it's going up. And that knot, see right here is the center of the, that, that's a pit of this block of wood that was like 10 by 10 or whatever. And that, that branch, all the branches go into that. So if you take a platter like this here, and those branches are going up that you, you'll see this red mark going the whole way down and set down to the point, to the center of it. So it's really interesting to So when you're turning it, Ben, um, so when you're turning it, you turn it down until you feel the, the, the diameter you choose a bottom shape, the, making sure that that red piece comes up. Is that's what is it defining your shape on the bottom? Yeah, or is there, do you yeah. stop, stop until you like the, yeah. the color? Yeah, you do. Okay. You can't tell by looking at the block. No. Wood, what it's going to be. Okay. As it's turning, it's going to tell you what it wants to be. So yeah. this one here had. Had to, it showed up with two, but it actually had more. But the other ones might have been up here that disappeared okay. after it turned down to. And that I think about three months ago, uh, AAW magazine they did had a, a piece on Norfolk Island pine. Yeah, and there's a lot of different things you can do with it. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, Mike Kutterbach. Uh, brought four things along. 
We'll start with the simplest one. It's just a simple bowl. Uh, it's maple. Uh, I only brought it because it has a really interesting grain on it. Is that dyed, Mike? No, it was standing dead. And I just had boiled linseed oil on it. Oh. And it darkened from that but I guess from the wow. minerals in it from standing dead. So it really has some nice grain. I decorated the edge with my wood burner. And then on the bottom, I put some Nordic runes on the bottom. And if you read Viking, it actually says not dishwasher safe. So <laughs> you know, not to put it in the dishwasher. You ruined it. Yes, I did. So, so uh, Mike, can you, yeah. can you comment a bit more on the standing dead statement? Does that, does that, darker color generally just because it was standing dead? That's and my guess. I'm not an expert on that, but I've seen that in other standing dead. I don't know if it's from the minerals. Put the linseed oil on. Um, it didn't look, it wasn't the nice white oh, okay. maple like you get maple. It sort of had a color to it and the linseed oil really brought out the darker color. Okay. I'm Thank guessing you. Because it's dead or there's minerals in the wood or some reason who can explain uh, next two are these are two hollow forms it's good to turn hollow forms every so often to understand why you don't make hollow forms uh, not my favorite <laughs> thing but I wanted to do try this decorating on the outside oh. uh, two different effects uh, one I like, this one on this side, this one I'm not so happy with. Uh, but these I call mess around pieces because, you know, this is version one and in a couple months you'll probably see version B. So, you know, what, it's... What did you use to make those patterns? Uh, a, the cuts all burrs. This one I used round and this one was more of a, like a disc. Okay. Uh, this one was just all freehand just by eye, cut in where it looks good. This one I actually laid out, spent a lot of time trying to lay it out. And uh, I don't know, it, it's fun to do. What's the finish on those? Acrylic paint. It's just airbrushed. Oh, brushed on. No, airbrushed. Airbrushed. Airbrushed acrylic paint. And like I say, it'll <laughs> probably disappear and then be something different in a couple months. And what's the wood underneath? What kind of wood? The wood underneath, this one was cork wood. And wow. this one was Osage orange. They were just two pieces <laughs> this size that I had in dry wood. I wanted to do them dry. Uh, this one I was smart and I masked off the bottom so I didn't paint it so you can actually see that it's wood. This one I'm going to have to sand that off so you can actually see the wood underneath. I kind of like that. So, you know, otherwise, it's you know, it could be plastic for all you know. And the last thing I brought is, this is a needle scaler. Air goes in this end, you pull the trigger, and it bangs in this end on the wood. Simple as that. Great way to make a texture. Does that, does that consume so much air that a small compressor wouldn't be able to? It consumes a lot of air, but you can do it in short bursts. You know, I have a five or six gallon compressor. It's not a big one, but it's not the real little one. And uh, I can run that out of air if I kept this constant. So yeah, they you do use a lot of air. Uh, you're more than welcome to pick it up and look at it. It's Harbor Freight. Uh, I think other brands hammer better. Yes, Thomas. They also make a gun type if, if you're less than comfortable sort of trying to manipulate that 90 degree, you know, they make a gun type needle scaler that you can get a hard break too. So. Yes. <clears throat> I don't know if everybody heard Thomas was saying they have one that's more like a pistol grip yeah. that you can use, but that costs more money and I'm cheap. So well, this one works. You're really cheap because if you bought it at Harbor Freight and it costs too much, you're you're you, you're, right, you're absolutely right. Oh, one thing, uh, <laughs> the ends of the needles come flat and they'll just smash the wood flat. So you got to make little domes on them. I guess the pointier it gets, the deeper it'll go. I imagine this is kind of what I ground. So, uh, so what what would it be made? Is what is it made for? The tool is made to clean metal. Okay. Like to clean a weld, not mm -hmm. to 
that or a piece of old rusty metal knocked the scale off. And uh, it just works really well for texturing wood. But can you remove the needles and- pick? You can. It's, right it's, it's, it comes uh, apart here and the needles slide out. I'm not gonna take it apart, it's greasy inside. Can you buy different diameter needles? No, you get one needle, comes with the gun. I'm so, not gonna buy more needles. So you rounded needle the ends come? of those? Yes, I rounded the ends over. Grinder? Or? Uh, I used an angle grinder. I didn't wanna put them on my good grinding wheel. I'm a little touchy about that since I spent more for the grinding wheels than most of the tools in my shop. So right. those I did not get from Harbor Freight. <laughs> Mike, could one of those vessels looked like I had some sort of iridescence in the in the finish? Yes, the, the one with the oval. Yeah, uh, well, what's the what's the finish you used on that? Is it a paint or? It's a yeah, it's acrylic paint. It's Golden's. Uh, now, what's the name of Thomas? What's the name of that paint? I'm not sure. Which interference. One. Interference. It's the interference paint. You put put it on a black surface, and then you get this shiny, glowy type look. And it's real sparkly because the interference paint doesn't spray very well through a airbrush because I guess okay. it has the chips in it or particles and they clog up. So you got to really thin it down. Okay. It almost has. And it's just, be, just because of the different thickness of the paint, the layers makes it the different color? The it's, it's the pigment in the paint with the mica chips. Uh, okay. You got to put it on a dark surface. If you put it on a light surface, you won't see anything. Okay, uh, that's cool. That, and you bought that at Harbor Freight too? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, okay. What, where do you get that paint then? Uh, I used to get it at AC Moore. I guess Michael, Michael sells AC it or Dick Blitz. Oh, okay. Amazon. Okay. Amazon, there's a good place. Yeah, it's called Interference Paint. Okay. There's a lot you can do with it. it it's kind of neat stuff. Cool. Thank you. All right. So, um, so first, I miss Thursday's coffee hour, as I always do, because some of us have to work. I'm one of those some of us's. Uh, and so I know there was a discussion of Axminster Chucks. So I brought my Axminster Chuck. Uh, and anyone is welcome to take a look at it, try to pick it up. Um, and I know there was a discussion about the nice thing about Axminster Chucks is they have like a ton of accessor, a ton of accessories, someone said, or accessories. Um, and I just brought a couple. Um, so it is um, got a dovetail uh, on the on the chuck jaw. So you can use a faceplate. You know, you can get one of these for like 20 bucks. So you can use a faceplate and then grab it with the dovetail in the chuck jaws and um, work it that way. And then if you have five or 10 of these and you're in the midst hey. of working on a bowl or whatever, you can so the camera actually so you can see his cheap. face. Um, yeah, that's not necessary. Uh, yeah. So I brought that. Um, if anyone wanted to check it out, is that the one fourteen? This uh, is the one fourteen. Yeah, oh, and on back order wherever you try and get it. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah I'm, I bought it just a couple of months ago, and I think you can buy the one. I mean, I don't think you need the one fourteen. I don't know unless you're doing really big work. And I actually bought it because of the O'Donnell jaws because I wanted to get that i i don't like thin jaws because they end up bending you know if you make a mistake or you're a little heavy-handed a lot of times those they're they're so far out from the chuck that they bend the nice thing about this is you get that same tiny diameter but no matter what you do you're not gonna be able to bend this it weighs like eight pounds i mean it's like a, you know so when we had the discussion about uh on thursday was i think three people weighed in on you know, would you, you kept trying to get someone to recommend it. Well, I kept trying to get them to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and they were saying, you know, and, and one, and one guy said, and I don't know his name, uh, but he wisely said, you know, all Chucks do the same thing and every one of them works. So, you know, now but people I, complain about the Nova because you actually have to turn the key backwards. And I don't know if you can't figure that out in four or five seconds after the second or third time you use it, you, maybe you shouldn't be wood turning, but um, I agree that most of the bulky, yeah. So I have I have two Novas, I have a one way, I have a Vic Mark, I have this. 
Um, I like this the best because it's very versatile and it's super heavy. And there's something about holding a really heavy chuck and making yourself feel good about the fact that it's well built. Um, but I have the little Nova G3 and I have the, um, the regular size Nova. I love the G3. I think it's a great little chuck. You do have to turn the key backwards. I'm sorry, Mike, but, um, and it's built for the one inch. So you have to get into that after if you're using one and a quarter. I, I'm just going to argue yeah. that guys who are getting started out need to fairly carefully choose a chuck line yeah. and start your investment in that. Otherwise you wind up with parts that don't cross. You know, well, you, I have four yeah. different chucks and the Nova's take what you're right. That the jaws, maybe they go across, they don't go across lines. But um, most of these things come with a number of, you know, like the jaws aren't really that expensive. Now, um, what's his name? Kip, Kip, you know, who's the guy in Germany? Kai. Kai was talking about how you can take the jaws off and there's these sub jaws so that if you're too lazy to take out eight screws, you can actually just take out four things and put four things back. But to me, eight things is just twice as many as four and still a really small number. So, the, and those under jaws are like $50 for the set. So to oh, me, wow. I'd rather spend that $50 on another, or maybe they're 34 or 35 to me. I'd rather spend that on something else and just, you know, take out the eight screws. The guy who said that all the chucks work one way or the other was Bill Blazik. And the yeah. reason I bring it up is Bill has 41 chucks. He yeah. copped to 41 chucks. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I don't think anyone needs 41. Uh, you know, I don't know. How many pieces are you working on at a time that you need 41 chucks? And how inconvenient is it to have to change jaws? I think that's a good time for me to rest my hands or for me to think about the process I'm involved. Like, these tasks that we have to do between putting a gouge on wood are maybe they're intentional. They give us the space to think differently from the time the lathe stops to the time it starts again. So I don't mind that time. I can see if you were doing production work or whatever, maybe you don't want to Right? Yeah. Well, I, th I, th um, I think you're right. The the jaws, for me, changing out the, the, the grips on the jaws doesn't take that long. And if I was doing production work or changing back and forth, like if you're doing a project like some guys say where they have three or four different sizes, and they're doing a, a 50 and they want to change them back and forth all the time, that I can see warranted but after that it only takes five minutes yeah and that's why i got the g3 because i do a lot of finials and i don't want yeah. to keep switching out jaws and switching out chucks so if i have one chuck on the big lathe and a small you know the g3 on a small lathe i can go back and forth without you know any hassle but again i, I mean how much time does it take to change jaws and maybe that's creative thinking time that you need anyway but if you're only going to buy one chuck if that's your goal is for new guys to, you know, only spend, first of all, this isn't really expensive compared to the Vic Mark and the one way, you know, the Chuck body here is 230 bucks or something. And if you get it in a package, like I did, you get a whole bunch of jaws. And I think I spent under $400 where, you know, you get a Vic Mark Chuck for $400 or somewhere in that neighborhood. So it's cheap. I mean, it's less expensive, but it's really well made. And um, there are so many different options for jaws that you won't see on any other um, chuck. Mm. But if you're looking for a one size, one solution fits all, I can take John's bait and recommend it. Um, but again, I work with a bunch of different ones, so they all work. Um, I don't know about equally well. Maybe I don't have time at, at, at the lathe to decide that, but they work equally well for me. Um, so then I brought this hollow form. Lift it up a bit, a little higher. Oh, yeah, yeah sorry. Thank you. So then I brought this hollow form, um, which is some kind of rosewood. Um, I don't know which kind because I got the wood at an auction. Um, when I first took, so this is not, you can see how shiny this is. This has no finish on it. This is just buffed. So whatever it is, it's got a, a tremendous amount of oil or resin in the wood. And you could, you know, like all rosewoods, I could smell it and I put my mask on immediately because, you know, People are worried about getting allergies to that. But um, this was like somewhere between pepper and cinnamon. That was the smell. So after a while, it could become a little irritating. Um, I, I don't know. Some of you may know uh, Dave Souza, who's a club member at Keystone and one of the founders of Keystone. And um, 
I took this wood in when it was a when it was a billet and I had barely taken off like it wasn't very even so I taken off one part of this side and one part of this side and this was this side was started out as like bright orange and yellow rings right so the grain was bright orange and yellow and I thought that's really cool and I said to Dave who's a you know well known and well respected I said which side should I use because this side has some very cool figure on it but this side had that really striking color and he said oh you should do that side it should be the top so I did that side as the top and this is what came out on the bottom and I was like oh I should have done it on the bottom right um so uh, it's a it's a beautiful piece of wood the problem with it is that it had you can see these big oops these big woo, check marks across the top which is why the opening is so big because a few of those check marks uh evidently liked the edge of my gouges quite a bit and uh i took a chunk out so i had to make it a little bigger but it is hollowed back out i didn't go all the way i didn't do the david ellsworth and go all the way to the point because I started to freak out about the check marks a little bit, and I'd rather be have both arms and hands and a bowl that's, uh -huh. I mean, a hollow form that's not perfect. So um, that's that. And then it's ornament season, right? So I started making some ornaments. Um, can you go down so I don't have to go up? Um, so these are all hollowed out. Um, these little gnomes are something I think a lot of people are doing now. And I sort of took a crack at a couple of them. The hardest part of the whole thing is that is putting the hair on so you can see this guy has some significant dandruff uh around the rim especially and then i got better at it so you can't tell as much on this one um and i'm now i'm making them out of different woods so the balls are different than the hats different than the whatever uh it's sort of a fun project if you've made a birdhouse ornament it's pretty much a birdhouse ornament with a weird roof um and a beard it's basically the same exact principle, you know, hollow out a cup shape and uh, put a cap on it. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's it for me. And what do you use for the hair? The hair you get at Michael's and it comes in these long, like two foot long by maybe six inch wide sheets. And you get, you know, like two of them for seven or eight dollars and i have a i have a white i have white one and then i have this one i couldn't decide in the store which one i thought would be cooler uh two out of three children like the white ones better though that's what i found out because i had some kids over to the house a week ago and i told them they could pick whatever ornament they wanted and there were three of them and two of them picked the white beard and one of them picked the brown beard so if you're making them for kids make the white beard that's all i can tell you the stand is just uh I did an auction for the art center I used to run and I made however many ornaments around the stand now and I auctioned them all off for 120 bucks or whatever. And right before the, the night of the auction, the day of the auction, right before I realized I didn't have anything to hold them on and I didn't want them to lay on a table and we have a jewelry studio. And so there was some copper wire. So I just basically uh, jury rigged a, a stand and it's it, the, 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 the oak cracked. So now it wobbles. And I've just never bothered to remake it. I need to make a better one. But you say that was copper? Yeah, it's brass. Okay. Brass. Or, yeah, brass. So, yep. Oh, I don't, don't trip over those new. Are these new? These are new. Yeah, those are little uh, little puck bikes. And they work pretty good. Those are fancy. We need to get those at Keystone. They're cheap, them. too. They're 35 bucks each. Wow. And they can daisy chain. You get them from Harbor Freight. <laughs> For 20 bucks, you get them from Harbor Freight. Well, then you can't daisy but chain. They don't work, yeah. They break <laughs> okay, this is our new guy. I'm Henry Fisher, the new guy. <laughs> so I've been turning four since July of last year, so pretty new. And so my latest project is I have a sister getting married in November. So I made a whole bunch of cheese platters for her for the for the wedding. And or I guess you could call them charcuterie boards. I know normally you don't turn those, but she asked if I could make some. So I made her, I made 18 uh, 12 inch platters out of five quarter boards glued together. And then I'm also making, this is one of two wine glasses. I still need to make the other one. Uh, this one I turned just this past Saturday night. 
And <clears throat> so I have another one that I need to make as well. So this is Sapili wood with the maple inlays. And so. so what are you using for a lathe? I have a Nova 1624 II, I guess oh, cool. it is. It's, it's a smaller or an intermediate lathe. It has a 16 inch sling. So, did you turn, slice, and return, or did you just chuck up one blank and then just turn the whole thing? Which way did you go when you did that? It was, I inlaid, it was basically a four by four, three and a half, three and a half by three and a half that I cut. These are at a 40 degree angle that I inlaid them and actually managed to get the intersection lined up pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So beautiful. Nicely yeah. done. So I have another one that I want to turn this weekend, my next turning session. So, so, so are you going to? Uh, one, one of the biggest challenges of uh, turning is to make two identical pieces. Are you going <laughs> to show sh show us a, a picture or send us a picture of this afterwards with the two of them together to see how <laughs> close you manage to get it? I can do that. Yes, I know. I've done. Um, Last year for Christmas, one of the Christmas gifts, I did two like small soup cups sure. or soup salad set that I made. And they, they were just simple little cups. And they, I got them fairly close. But yes, I know that'll be a fun part to turn the next one and have it match this. Should have so, left some extra wood on this so you could keep turning this about. Oh. Quite <laughs> yeah, I'm the new guy here. So <laughs> I'm just learning here. So, oh. and I finished it. The inside, I did um, three coats of walnut oil. I wanted to make sure it's coated. I mean, I'm sure you guys would have suggestions too on what, what else I could have used. And then I finished it with the axe abrasive paste and the polishing paste as well. Okay. Okay. Cool. So that's that. And my favorite project I've turned is this guy. You might have to zoom in on it. It's the first time I've done a ring, and I thought it turned out pretty good. That yeah, might not show up very well on the camera. It should. So there you go. That's a good shot. Is that nice. rosewood? It is Brazilian cherry, or just cool. with maple inlays, cool. and but yeah, it even the different. What's the spinner? Yeah, different. Well, no, it's just the different colors, even in the different sides of the world. It just, it's the first time I've yeah. one, and I really didn't know what to expect. So, <laughs> do you buy a, uh, a metal core ring no, grinder, or is it just wood all the way through? No, it's all wood. Oh, okay. wow. That's cool. Where are we at here? There we go. <clears throat> it's so all is wood. each layer oriented 90 degrees to the previous? The, the maple is oriented 90 degrees from the Brazilian cherry. The cherry, because that way I still have those wood grains lining up through the through the inlays. So, and that is finished with. I have, I think about twelve coats of CA glue on there, medium CA. And again, it was my first time using doing a CA finish. So, um, yeah, I had done some research into CA finish, and I heard a lot of things about people having a hard time with CA and having it finish out foggy and just so I just I put with the lathe spinning it's not a variable speed lathe it's a an eight speed so the lowest setting is like 214 rpms so with the lathe spinning I would put about two drops of CA on and with a paper towel and just smooth it out and give it a mist of the accelerator and then buff it with the dry part of the towel and Put the next coat on just kept repeating until i had mm -hmm. 12 coats on and then again i finished it by sanding it with 1000 and 2000 grit sandpaper and then did the axe abrasive paste and the restoring polish finish on it so so before doing wood turning henry did you uh, do um furniture making or anything like that or is this your I, first foray into wood my background well i grew up I grew up on a dairy farm, but my my uncle and my grandfather had a uh, woodworking shop on the farm in one of the outbuildings. So I grew up in a woodworking shop, and okay. 
then it would have been, I think it would have been my dad's uncle lived nearby and he had a small woodworking shop at, and he had a lathe that he would turn like table legs and chair spindles and that. Sure. Kind of so he turned it. I watched him turn a spindle one time when I was just a little kid. So, and then early last year, one time spring, whatever, I guess stumbled upon a YouTube video of somebody turning a bowl and thought, no, I want to do that too. Cool. So. <laughs> cool. Um, do you, and and I, I noticed your pieces would be what we call segmented turning pieces. So the uh, pieces glued together. Is that what you'd like to focus on? Or is there, are, are you um, doing just plain platters and stuff like that with just using the wood grain itself? I, I've done quite a bit of segmented projects. And I also actually have done more segmented projects than just, you know, turning sure. it out of a chunk of wood. But I am, I'm doing some of that as well. I've been over the last year and a half almost, I've been collecting wood as I find it uh, in my travels during work, whatever. For example, just sure. a week I was out looking at a, at a job for a customer and they had a, they had a tree laying in the yard while it was cut up. Of course, like, yeah, what kind of tree is that? And they said, oh, it's Bradford Bear. I said, well, do you mind if I take a couple of chunks? So, Sure, I have, I have quite a stash in my shed by now. That's Bradford so, Bear, so, one of our best woods. I yeah, it's one. It's in. glorious. Yeah, it's glorious to turn. It's really, it's really excellent. I should have taken. More, I should have taken more than two pieces. Huh? Well, the, the thing about Bradford Bear, it's once it's dry, it's probably the hardest American wood. Oh, really? And it, it, uh, it's the grain is very fine, and it's just, okay. it's just. You can get beautiful detail, the sharpest detail you can get in it. Okay. okay. Yeah, I've taken the, I took a couple of decent sized chunks that I split them, took the pith out of them to hopefully keep them from cracking. So. You, you look young enough that you should be able to get a barn full of wood for yourself before you actually <laughs> turn it all, like well, the rest of us. <laughs> at this point, the amount of wood I have, I'm thinking I have no idea when I'm going to go through it all. Well, <laughs> that, that's, that's the life of a wood turner. Join the gang, buddy. Right. <laughs> yeah, you got to get ahead on your wood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and if you've got a job that takes you around so you can find it, all the better. You know, oh, yeah. that's the problem. With, you're, you're officially a wood turner if you're too cheap to buy any. No, I haven't. I'm sorry. I, I was going to say I haven't bought any wood yet. But yes, I did. This this segmented, these segmented projects. Um, yeah. Pioneer Woodcraft here in Leola. Yeah. Okay. You're a. Uh, woodworking shop that I found out I can go in there and they have a rack in the back of the shop that they throw all kinds of short stuff on that you can go in and pull stuff off and segmenters paradise yes it is absolutely <laughs> and I wish they would have some of the nicer like rosewoods and purple hearts some of that stuff but I haven't found any of that you know about Groff and Groff I know of them. I haven't been down there yet. You should take a trip down there. Some, you got to get up early on a Saturday morning. It's a little bit noon, but it's different. sometime. It's I would, a nice place, and it's the it's the cheap stepsister to uh, Hearn. They used to okay. be partners with Hearn, but Hearn okay. they had a parting of the ways, and it's a good thing for us they did because Hearn is incredibly expensive. Okay. Graph and Graph is not at all. Yeah. I do want to go out there sometime. Yes. Well, if you you're, you're close enough to Kelsey there, that you could probably arrange a road trip with him. Okay. <laughs> if, you, if you're close to Lehola. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I go down there a lot. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Is Bob um, Silverman on the on the uh, call? I don't believe so. Okay. Well, unfortunately, he's one of the... In that case, because Bob actually had a... Can you see my share? Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying he to get sent me a bunch of he been sent me a bunch of stuff to share, and I sort of feel a little bit guilty about sending it. So I'm just going to flip through them quickly. Sorry, and then come back to Henry since he was standing there. I got this picture. Yeah. Is, is this from? Is this was this for the challenge? Um, no, that was something I did uh, as a Christmas gift last year. That was out of a five by five cube. Okay, I, I saw the. This is the making. This is the finished product, and this is a starting point. That's the starting point. Yes. Mm. Cool. That was on my old page. 
my first day. Oh, so you've been turning for a while longer than your new lathe is what you're saying. Now, the loop, then I bought this one in June of last year. I got the new one in January this year. Oh, I see. That little nine-inch lathe didn't last long for me. <laughs> you outgrew it. Yeah. Sorry. So what, what what's the wood on this one? Sibelian oak. Cool. Very nice. So the only other one I've got here then um, is uh, the monthly challenge one. So do we can we go on with that one um, now? Yeah. yeah, I think we can move on to the challenge. Oh, sorry, Randy Smith. I'm sorry, Randy. He sent me a picture just before the show tonight. Do you want to comment, Randy? Yep. Uh, I just finished a batch of 40 pens uh, for the Freedom Pens uh, project. Um, I had to redo one or two of them because they did not come out the first time. Sometimes pens don't make it through the process. But uh, this is a batch of 40 pens and uh, tomorrow Worldwide Woodturners uh, is uh, meeting on Zoom. And uh, uh, I'll find out uh, who and where I can ship them. Uh, I've sent them stuff before, but uh, any questions? Are they all the same pattern, Randy? Uh, mostly, nope. yes. Uh, I made uh, probably about a dozen of them are kind of faux European, where the cap goes over the, uh, the nib end, uh, and the other ones just have a small... Uh, cut out in the center. I did not put uh, center bands in them. But if anybody needs center bands, I got them. <laughs> OK. What's the uh, uh, event for? Uh, Freedom Pens is a project, uh, several different wood turning groups. Uh, what they do is they collect the pens, and they send them to servicemen who are serving our country overseas. And uh, so it's a way of telling them that we care about them. Cool. Thank you, Randy. Any other questions for Randy? No. Well, Barry, this is your. I, have, I wasn't sure if I'd be coming here, but I have it here on the bench so you can, you can go past it. Can, can you go back and show the Silverman piece again? Sure. Because you just whipped right through it. So I'm not sure what these are made of, but Bob's Bob sent me some pictures. It looks like it's it's it looks like it's slightly spalted, but I'm not sure that it is. And um, it appears that he's made himself a uh, a new um, um, branding. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Bob is a, for, a retired dentist. So Toothaches, Toothacres Farm, I thought was a rather clever name. And then another vessel, he's, I guess it looks like he's carved that quite a bit because it can't do that entirely on the lathe. A vase of some sort. But that's all I got. Okay. What was that inlay? Muscle he shell. said, um, what did it say? Muscle shell muscle inlay? Shell. Muscle shell, yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. So I can take another, I don't know if I can zoom in on this or not. Just see if I can. It's very nice. Yeah. So that would be muscle shell and some kind of CA or something as a make as a so, 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 or, or an epoxy or something okay. like that. I would assume. Yeah. I who's um I guess um Stephen uh, uh, Stevenson was the one who was doing most of it for our club. Anyway. Hey, any other uh, show and tell items? 
before we move on to the have, monthly challenge? I have something, Matt. Uh, Ratzinger's out there. Ratzinger. Tim. Yeah. I started playing with uh, Outbound on my father-in-law's old lathe. It's a 1958 Atlas lathe. And I had to build my own tool rest. So I'm still working on that a little bit and trying to even, th even some things out. I have some vibration I'm dealing with. But anyway, a couple of friends of mine have some looms that they got rid of and they gave me the wood. So looms have a lot of holes in them because of different parts attached to them. But I made a 14 inch plate this is made out of ash and the holes are plugged with cherry. And they just happen to be in that pattern. So this plate, like I said, 14 inches in diameter and it's about an inch thick. So that's, that's my first uh, outbound piece that I've made. You mean outboard of the lathe? What's that? Was that outboard turned outboard on your lathe? Yes, what outboard kind of on the lathe. What kind of yes. lathe have you got? It's an old Atlas 1958. It was made by made for craftsmen to be sold by Sears. So it's just oh. a four speed belt driven. It's not a variable speed or anything like that. So that's that's my first piece. And what do you have in mind for that platter? What are you going to do with it? Uh, set it on the table. <laughs> and put what on it? I mean, what is it for fruit or for meat? Uh, nothing, nothing in particular. It just has Danish oil on it. So, I, I mean, it's just a decorative piece. And what part of the loom did you say it came from? Uh, this actually came from one of the side pieces. Hmm. Pretty so big you have loom. all the other pieces going in, bolting into it. So that's why all the holes. Wow. Fair size loom, I would think. Yeah, yeah, it's... Uh, well, these, these three pieces, this is actually three pieces of two by six glued together. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yep. So that's all I have. Great. Thank, okay. you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Tim. Yep. we we'll move on to the challenge. Uh, this month's challenge is uh, lipstick on a pig. And we have one submission, Barry. And the winner is. That's right. <laughs> I won. I won. Uh, well, the, the lipstick portion is. I don't. Okay. The lipstick portion is this. Uh, I got interested in crackle paint about two months ago, and I overbought the stuff. So if anybody needs crackle paint, I got it in multiple colors. Anyhow, this is a black on uh, red near the center, and then green everywhere else. The wood is uh, a kind of uh, spalted silver birch, the best I can figure out, or else a yellow birch. Uh, it was something that was given to me a long time ago. The pig portion is this was my first foray into hollow form turning. And it was done except for cleaning up the bottom. And I foolishly, this is like a one eighth inch thick, I foolishly put the expansion jaws on my chuck in that little thing and did not put a center down here. And it was uh, coming along pretty well and all of a sudden it just shattered and flew off the lathe. Uh, it didn't hit me, but it was in, uh, the top was in like three pieces. So this is about 95% wood and 5% Bondo. And with all the presence of the there were actually a couple of small pieces that were missing. It's like when you break China, you can't find all the little shards. So it, uh, it looked pretty gruesome. My grandson saw it in pieces and he wanted it, uh, mainly for putting marbles inside and doing this. And so I rescued the pieces of it and glued them together. And then uh, I knew I had to cover the, the Bondo. So I, I chose something opaque and after a couple of different tries, I decided upon the uh, crackle look, and I'm happy with how it came out, and he gets it tomorrow. Cool piece. Okay. Any other challenges in Zoomland? 
Uh, next month's challenge uh, was supposed to be the charity challenge, but we've substituted it. As we've mentioned before, it's going to be at Barry's suggestion, uh, the miniature challenge, the smaller is better. So whatever you'd like to turn, very, very small. So I can't wait to see what- wait, it, Was that a holoform or- No, we're gonna go miniature challenge. Just miniature. Just, yep, just miniature, can be whatever. can holoform miniature. Yeah, if you miniature, wanna go holoform- It doesn't have to be holoform. Yeah, no, nope. okay. whatever you'd like, just in miniature. Um, any tips and tricks for this month? Okay. Uh, then we're going to take a short break right now for about 10 minutes, come back at um, 8.10, and then have our presentation. So we'll see you all back here in about 10 minutes. It came with my first lead. Okay. Smokes. The tank. Yes. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't think I could put this on my lead. I think it would, I think it would run it out of true. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. He's right. I don't know how you would break those if you tried. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I the uh, Nova. I like it. I like it fine. I bought a bunch of jaws for it. The, Which standard, one do you have? the standard Nova is Nova 2. Okay. It's there. Okay. The sort of standard one. Yeah. yeah, like he said about the G3, it's technically, I think, for my lane, according to their specs, I think it said it's designed for a lane up to a 14 inch swing. Okay. Which I have a 16. So. Okay. I'm pushing your limits. I'm, I'm definitely pushing my limits. I did get a I did get a set of four inch jaws for it. Okay, cool. So the, the the biggest the you guys the biggest thing about a Nova lathe and what you're talking about I overheard your conversation here is if, so, to me when I changed lathes and went to the uh, went from a one inch diameter insert to a inch and a quarter or whatever drive with an eight eight threads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the Nova, at least, well, I'm sure they all do this, but making just making that conversion, you have to get an ins make sure the insert's right so it actually fits on your lathe. Otherwise, you got to get a whole new chuck right. system. Yeah. When, so, I, when I switched from, old, from the old uh, Craftsman lathe that I had in that the picture with the cube, that the Nova G3 chuck came with that lathe. Mm. The guy had bought okay. it, never used it even. Had, wow. He had never used it. Yeah. So when I switched to the Nova lathe, I had to get a different insert. Yeah, exactly. But, so you know, go ahead. The standard uh, threads on the, the Nova chuck, like the yeah. Nova 2, that, that's an uh, inch and a quarter by eight, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Sounds but, but you can, I, I've got myself a mini lathe now, and I, I just went at it and got myself a one inch um insert for my my chuck so now i can go between the mini lathes which has a one inch by what one inch eight by eight or one inch by ten or whatever it is and then you know put a different insert but it's it's a lot cheaper than going for a whole new set of chucks yeah and i'm agreeing you know what people don't say about this whole thing is that for me when i started out 100 bucks 150 bucks on a chuck was a lot of money so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. When a guy says he's got 40 of these things, it's like, well, he spent a lot more money than I ever want on chucks. <laughs> <laughs> or he was donated by whatever. So but I ended up I ended up with the Nova getting the large one, you know, the big the the, the big diameter, just because of the large I've got a um powermatic lathe, which has got a, a 10 inch swing, so I can do up 20 inch, but the large diameter has a five inch jaws on it. Okay. But the the the, the jumbo. But you can put the small jaws on the large, on, on the small um, teeth on the large jaws because they're all interchangeable. You just can't put the small, the large teeth, the large clamps on the small jaws. Well, you actually can, to be honest. It's just a matter of how you want to do it. But the only reason for getting even going to a bigger jumbo one is just because of the stability for holding larger pieces. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. but yeah. yeah. I've definitely pushed the limits on my Nova G3 chuck. I mean, I had a, a rough turn, the piece of walnut that I actually I had, I had rough turn the, to round with the chainsaw. And when I put it, when I mounted it on the lathe, I still had to trim some of the corners. So yeah. on, a, on a Nova G3 chuck. So 
don't tell me. Anything. Welcome to the rabbit hole. Is all <laughs> I can say. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I had I had a Nova sixteen something before I went to the um, before I um, got my uh, Powermatic, and the reason I got the Powermatic is I just wanted to get a bigger lathe because the Nova was was had the very problem you're talking about. Just wanted something a bit better, yeah. just a little bit more stable. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Hey Doug, what was the diameter of that plate you had that we saw over the summer? Was it last spring? I forget. The large diameter. The, the, Thirty-two inches. Thirty-two inches. Yeah. Yeah. And I did that outboard. Okay. But yeah. Yeah, I just did that, that. I got. Sorry. I just did. I got the piece. Yeah, oh, someone, someone gave it up. No. You just did an outboard. You said. I just did an outboard piece um, a couple months ago, about 16 inch diameter, but the wood was so punky, it was uneven. It was a hard maple, it was a spalted maple, but okay. half, of, half of it was punky and the other half was yeah. still hard. So it, the vibration was just insane. Yeah.